All right. I wanted to share a little real life work example that I've been kind of tackling with um, a group of other developers. And I think this example is a good overview of like more complex problems that a beginner might not really understand. And I wanted to kind of walk you through like what we're trying to do on our, my project and how we're trying to solve this problem. So we have a feature or a use case where a user has to basically click a button and that button loops through we'll say 200 or 300 records. And for each of those records, we basically generate a PDF that has like eight or nine pages. And then we basically need to combine all those PDFs into a single large PDF that has, you know, eight or nine times 300. So what is that? 300 times nine, about 2,700 pages in the PDF. If that, if I did my math correctly. Let me go ahead and do this 250. So about 2000. So ultimately we need to do a lot of computation. Okay. So the issue that we're running to right now is we did all of this in a single Lambda and it takes a long time to do this. Like the Lambda has a max timeout of 15 minutes. And when we do uh, this data that has 200 or 300 records attached to it, it takes much longer than 15 minutes. So we had to kind of re-engineer our solution and I'm going to kind of walk you through how we kind of got through that thought process. Um, and if you don't know much about Amazon and S3 and Lambda and stuff like this, all might also be good to kind of follow along. So let me just go ahead and show you. Let me go ahead and add some architecture stuff. I believe there's some like user stuff. So we have a user who clicks a button, right? So the button is going to go to an API. And I'm still trying to get better at Excel draw. I used to use draw IO all the time, but for some reason it just like crashes a lot. So I'm just gonna start using this a little bit more. So a user hits the API with a request saying, hey, I need to generate these PDFs. And how this kind of worked before is, um, let me go ahead and put API here. And I'm gonna put some boxes in here. So in here we have like three boxes. This is all running in a Lambda on Amazon. So, you know, there's an API gateway here that's going to take the request and then invoke a Lambda and pass the data. But kind of like what happens behind the scene is we have some JavaScript code. So I can go ahead and say like JS is here. And then that JavaScript code actually invokes something called PDF lib to um, do some computation and combine PDFs and do some other stuff with PDFs. So there's also another thing called um, Puppeteer. So Puppeteer, if I could expand this box a little bit and make this API maybe a little bit bigger. Puppeteer is like basically a way to generate PDFs using the Chromium browser. So this whole thing, um, let me just kind of show you some more. Like <laughs> under the hood, if I make this and send to the back, this is running on the Lambda layer. Is there a way to fill this stuff in? Background. Okay, I don't, I don't know if this is a good idea, but let me do this. So this whole API is built on top of a Lambda layer. And that layer contains Puppeteer. So it gets a little bit complex. I'm not gonna talk about how we set that up. Like, but the idea is when the user tries to generate all those PDFs, we fetch some data from the database. This is actually very hard to read. So let me change the background, whatever. That's probably good. All right, so I, I don't even know why I showed you the layer. It doesn't really matter. But the, the hard part is that the, the issue is that Puppeteer can only create one PDF at a time, OK? So if you try to create 10 or two or three different PDFs in parallel, uh, this stuff just starts crashing because it eats up all the memory on the Lambda machine. And we have like the max memory set on the, the Lambda. so. Um, maybe there's some more experimentation we can do with Puppeteer and see if we can get more of these things running in parallel. But what we notice is that like sometimes it's very unstable and it crashes if you try to generate more than one PDF at a time. Um, but now that I think about it, I probably should go back and test some more stuff out to make sure that we're not maybe missing something really simple. But anyway, this thing takes a long time. This takes over 15 minutes. The Lambda times out because there is a max cap on how long your Lambdas can run, which happens to be 15 minutes. So we are trying to re-engineer, let me just delete the layer stuff because it's not really important. We're trying to re-engineer like how this works. 
And one thing that you can do in Amazon and just programming in general is something called like asynchronous programming where you do fan out, fan in. Uh, I think some people call it map reduce. There might be some other names for it, but basically this little piece of work, you can actually split it up into mul multiple workers and do parallel processing on it, right? So instead of doing this all here in a single function, what we're doing right now is we're trying to have the user I'm going to change this to a worker. So now we're going to try to have a worker that runs. The user is still going to hit an API. So I'll just go ahead and say uh, API. And the API is actually going to um, basically send off some events, right? So one way you can kind of achieve a faster performance with your API and with your code is by using workers and lambda is a great tool for kind of making this stuff run really fast so let me go and bring in something called a queue so in programming um, there's something called message brokers where basically you put things on a queue and you have these consumers that just read from the queue and start processing some data and when it's done with that one particular event it you know deletes it from the queue and then it just grabs another message so this is a great way to basically do a lot of parallel processing and we are trying to do that right now. And I've done it before in other projects, so it works, works pretty well. But basically, instead of this thing doing all the work, what we're doing is we're having this send off individual events to the queue. And then we have all these workers that basically spin up and just start consuming the queue, right? So I just go ahead and put like SQS. Uh, it's an SQS queue, right? And so instead of having this thing be a for loop of 250 things that loops through, we're sending off 250 events here into this queue. And then Amazon's pretty cool. It's, it's smart enough to like behind the scenes scale up a bunch of lambdas to process every message as fast as possible. And through some testing, we were able to get the computation from 15 minutes for doing a huge uh, amount of data down to about one minute. So what, what kind of happens is, let me show you, we have like a database here, because this is also another kind of interesting scenario that you need to think about. As these things finish, we have to basically keep updating some type of data structure or map to know when every single worker is done, right? There's some issues with the asynchronous programming that makes it a little bit difficult to um, set up. And there might be some built-in ways on Amazon to do like batch processing. I think there's like a batch processing service that might have been easier, but we already have we're already pretty familiar with like SQS and AWS and stuff like that. So we decided to do this approach instead because I think it would save us time. But basically, as all these workers finish, they have like a, a specific ID. So this might be like ID of one, and then this worker will process ID of one, it'll finish, and then it updates in a database somewhere that ID one has finished. And then overall, we know that there needs to be a total of 250 that need to finish, right? So we have this API over here polling, you know, every five or 10 seconds. And then we're going to say, have all IDs finished processing. Okay, so this Lambda is still running. It just sits there and runs and keeps on pulling from the database to know like when all these workers have finished creating their PDFs. And now something I also did not put in is that we are using S3. So I'll just go ahead and put like S3 here. And then I'm going to put Dynamo because that's our database, DynamoDB. We, let me put this up here so I have like space. Basically, as these things finish, they're going to write their little PDFs to this S3 bucket. They're also going to, you know, update Dynamo to tell Dynamo that, hey, my, my worker job is done. And then finally, when this API determines that all these things have finished, all it does is it grabs all the PDFs from S3, it fetches them all down, and then using that PDF lib I kind of talked about, so I'm going to put that here, it takes all the S3s and it combines them together in a single giant S3. And then ultimately that thing gets saved again back to S3, and then we basically tell the user that, hey, your document is ready. So we basically say, um, go fetch your final S3 document. And here we store combined PDF into S3. So I, I guess I just wanted to kind of share with you that like, 
when you get more into like back end coding and you need to like make stuff more performant and speed stuff up, this is where you get to like the real fun. This stuff is actually like really enjoyable to figure out and design and develop. And I love when I get tasks that involve this type of work. Doing a React is fun, but honestly, like being able to build out systems like this where you architect like all these little components and modules and systems that have to like interconnect to each other, it gets really fun. So that is kind of like what we're building right now. And there's like more nuanced details about like our, our solution that I can't really get into. Well, I could get into them. I'm just not going to because I'm going to cut this video um, off soon. But overall, like if you need to do some type of really, you know, fast parallel processing, this is a potential way you can do it. I think something I could also mention is that we send off emails. So like as this thing is done, or as it's processing all of its little things, it's using S SES. Let me go ahead and say like SES, which is the Amazon service that send out emails, right? So this worker, not only is it generating PDFs and like updating databases, it's sending off emails to the users. And you kind of run into issues because everything in Amazon has limits, right? There's a limit to how many emails a second you can send. There's a limit to how much data you can ingest into Dynamo at once. There's limits to how, well, S3 doesn't really have that many limits, but with these limits in place, um, we were running into a new issue where basically we were sending out too many emails too fast and we were getting a ton of throttling exceptions. So we had to kind of go back to the drawing board and refactor how we're doing the SQS. And this is actually using a first in first out queue now. And we kind of, you know, mangled some stuff with group ids to be able to kind of reduce the amount of parallel processing that can go on at once and just throttle that down which allows the system to work without overloading different amazon services right so we were kind of overloading ses here so we had to throttle these and put some type of like limiter in place right here to prevent these workers from just like running un unhinged and just throwing out tons of emails really fast um, we could ask for a account boost for how many emails a second we can send, but it's always good to have like limiters in front of your stuff. Or if whatever reason you get a huge flood, flood of traffic, or you have, you know, these different authenticated users who all decide they want to do the same task at the same time. Like if you have like 10 users all decide to click the same button at the same time, then you're going to have a huge ingest of all these messages. And you need to make sure there's a delimiter in place to prevent it from just basically DDoSing your entire system. So just wanted to touch on some of these topics. If you want more information about like any of this stuff, if you want me to talk about system designs or anything like that, I can. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys learned something from this. If you uh, want to join my Discord and ask me questions, feel free to. The link should be in the description. We got a community of other people trying to learn how to code as well. So you can go there and ask us questions or ask me questions if you want to. Anyway, have a good day and happy coding.